me, Tannis from Tannis Fiber Arts, and I'm a knitwear designer and a yarn dyer. And today I want to talk to you about two new patterns that both feature knitting and crochet. And it's new for me to be introducing crocheted elements. It's new for me to be crocheting garments, period. And I think because knitting is my comfort zone, adding the knitted elements is what like I'm able to wrap my mind around. And um, I just, let's get into it. I just wanted to talk about it because there's some differences. So this is my newly launched pattern called Jethro. This is the Jethro cardigan. That's what I'm presently wearing. And my other pattern, which I launched first earlier this month or last month, is the Fleetwood Pullover, and that's this one. And so this one features just, they both feature granny squares. They're not just crochet in general. They're, they're really an ode to the granny square. It's like not just any crochet, only granny squares. So I love granny squares. Um, I love crocheting little bits that you then sew together. Um, I've made several blankets in that style over the past, you know, 20 years or so. Um, all of them have been very colorful, very, you know, using up leftover bits of yarn, no plan, just start crocheting squares and then sew them together and have a ball with it. And I've had the, I wanted to explore doing that sort of thing in a garment. And, um, but it's different for me. And so I needed to sort of wrap my mind around it and do some experimenting. And I am delighted at how easy it was. You know what I mean? I think I had this roadblock, like I didn't know how to do it. I'd never done it. I was expecting all these challenges and really there it's different. There are, you know, restrictions and limitations and just different things you've got to consider, but it, it went seamlessly. It went so well. So I think the first thing I'll talk about is Fleetwood. Um, actually, before I jump into it specifically, I also want to mention that as part of these patterns, I put together a playlist here on YouTube that has a bunch of little videos that sort of show how I, a, a few specific techniques that I've used for, in these patterns, specifically how I pick up stitches along the edge of a crocheted square in order to knit off the side of it. Um, also how I weave in ends because there are a lot of ends because I tend to work with a lot of colors, but that's nothing new. It's just how to weave them in specifically in crochet versus knitting. I included that, a video on how I join and that's not a video that I made. That's a video that I use when I'm joining my own squares. And so I, it was super helpful to me. So I included that one in the playlist. I don't know if there's others, but this one will be there too, where I talk all about the fit, all about the construction, all about the difference. Cause I think that the majority of the people who are watching this, the people know me as a knitter. You guys are mostly knitters. I know there's a lot of overlap between knitters and crocheters. Of course, many of you are multi craft craftual you guys can do it all right you guys can you can knit you can craft you can crochet you can probably sew you can embroider i'm sure you guys are all brilliant but i know a lot of you like me are coming at it from a knitter's perspective first and so for you let's talk about it i want to talk about the challenges that i met um the way i overcame them and the things to consider when working on a garment like this versus just a, a garment that's just knit so first Fleetwood. Fleetwood is a pullover. It features a beautiful double rolled collar. I decided not to put this one on so that I could hold it up and show it and turn it around and stuff. So I have nothing on the back. I have nine crocheted granny squares on the front in a variety of colors, no plan, just super fun. I just went and made a bunch of squares, joined them, and then I got into the knitting. And now for this pattern, one of the big things, big differences between knitting and crochet, here are the main two things that I've sort of encountered with and during this design process. One is that crochet is heavier than knitting and it uses a lot more yardage. So the yardage requirements for this cardigan, because there's so much crochet in it, is way more than the equivalent would be if it were all knit. Just news you can use if you're a knitter going into crochet more yardage and then it's heavier. The resulting garment is obviously heavier and then the drape is different because of that. And so for this garment, since I wanted the crochet only to be on the front, 
In order to balance the weight of the crochet, I did all of the crochet squares. The crocheted element is entirely done in DK weight yarn, and then all of the knitted elements, so the remainder of the sweater, those are knit in worsted weight yarn. And that just sort of, I think it makes for a much more balanced um, garment. I think that had I done the whole thing in crochet, that it, I would have struggled, first of all, the side panels, I think I would have struggled to get them to match because the gauge between knitting and crochet isn't identical. Um, so going up to a heavier yarn for the knitted portions just helped with that. And then also it just, it matches better the weight of the crochet. I will still say the crochet panel is still denser and heavier than all the knitting, but it's, um, it flows really well. It goes together really well. And I think that the back, I think the front would pull down more if the back were knit entirely in DK because it just wouldn't have the weight, it wouldn't have the drape, it wouldn't, I think it, it would have been less elegant of a finish. So this worked super well. And what, to pick up the stitches along the top to make it, like it's really quite a seamless transition from crochet to knit, which was something that I wasn't sure how that was gonna be accomplished. And it's as easy as it sounds. It's just like picking up stitches on knitting. You've got all these little V's on the edge of the crochet, like a chain stitch from when you, you know, that's just what happens when you crochet a granny square. You end up with these V's that look a heck of a lot like what you end up with when you're knitting. And you just, I just knit into each V to pick up the stitches and then knit across and it just looks like it flows out of the crochet and straight into the knitting and that worked super, super well. And as I say, because of the difference in gauge between the worsted weight and the DK weight, it sort of compensates, it makes up the difference that you would get if the difference that is presented because the crochet has a different gauge than the worsted. And then the rest of the garment is just knit like a regular garment. The sides, um, I have you knit two panels after you complete your crocheted granny square center, you knit the panels on either side to achieve the width of your final sweater, the desired width, and then those are sewn up using mattress stitch, which is something that you might be familiar with if you've, you know, done a lot of knitting. Um, that's, uh, it also went very, very easily. One V for one stitch. Actually, I changed the rate at which you sew it up. It's all in the pattern because the row gauge versus the crochet gauge, again, it's a gauge thing, right? That's knitting, that's designing. It's all gauge, gauge, gauge. So, <laughs> And, but then the sleeves are, you know, picked up from knitting. So the only sort of juicy part and interesting kind of different part of this sweater is the fact that there's a crochet panel incorporated into the knit fabric, but it went so smoothly. I'm so happy with how the sweater turned out. I absolutely love it. It's cozy. It is not so see-through that I feel like I need to wear like a thick layer underneath it or a solid layer. Like you could just wear you know, it depends on your comfort zone, but I can just wear this over a bra. I wasn't sure how many, how transparent, like how big the holes in the crochet would end up. But um, I mean, I guess big enough, you can stick your fingers through. But when you're wearing it, it, it kind of casts a shadow. You don't really see anything underneath. Um, what else do I have to say about this beauty? I think I have to also say, I don't know. I'll come back to it if I think of something else. Sorry about that. Just really pausing. Oh, that I have kits. Perhaps that's what I thought was relevant to add. I've put together kits for this sweater. Um, oh no. Okay. So yes. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say is just how fast crochet is. To knit the, or to crochet these nine granny squares and then knit all the components around the front is way faster than knitting an entire front. So that's a fun little twist or you know bonus with all the crochet as well is that I find crochet is much faster than knitting if you're comfortable with crochet if you're learning maybe it'll take you a little bit longer but also to add I learned how to crochet on YouTube I just went how to crochet you know I learned you it's I think that if you're used to fibers obviously it's a different hand motion than knitting you've got to get used to the muscle memory you know you've got to get used to doing it but I think anybody can do it I think you can do it and so give it a shot if you haven't. This sweater I'm in love with, I have kits for it, and it is a super fun little number. So my crochet adventure this year, I started 
crocheting granny squares with absolutely no plan for no rhyme or reason in January, sort of like in place of having a sock on the go or just whatever. I just, I had a whole bunch of yarn, DK wet yarn on my wall, believe it or not. I have taken almost all of the DK off of this wall and moved around the worsted to fill it back up. My wall contains only worsted and DK. I have all my fingering scraps elsewhere. And the remaining yarn here is almost all worsted. And I can't believe like I took so much off. I've made multiple sweaters and yet it's still full. Like it, this wall will not, I took almost all of this off the wall. Like how is the wall still so full? Now I say almost because of course, whenever I do things like this, I start realizing like, oh, I, I have got, you know, 30 colors and I'm like, but I really need this color. So like this was a full skein that I took from my collection that I added, probably this one as well. I did take a couple to like round out the palette of, of delight, but I just, you just can't believe it. Delightful. So I took all my DK weight scraps. I guess I'll bring my bin back. I put them all in here and then I admit I then stroll from my stash to like add in more colors and to have more variety and stuff that I wanted. Some pops really like probably I think I added these ones if I'm being honest. I think I added all of these from my stash because they're newer colors. They're colors that I love, colors that I wanted to show and they're definitely pops whereas everything else I was sort of I think getting into a zone where I was making all these granny squares and um, they were just like kind of starting to look all the same and so I needed a few pops and so I added those and I just reach in, I grab, I've got my hook right here. I've got a couple on the go because I was making them and weighing them and seeing, you know, checking yardage and stuff for all my pattern development. So I just randomly choose colors like they don't match. There's no plan. Sometimes my kids choose the colors. It's super fun to do. And so now I've got, I've still, I'm not done guys, I'm not done. Then I have my whole assortment of finished granny squares in here. But to my point, I started in January just making granny squares for fun because I just sort of needed a light, no pressure, fun project to be working on. And granny squares were it. I assumed I was just gonna make a whole bunch of them and sew them together and make a blanket. That was my plan. But then I was, decided to try the Fleetwood pullover plan because that's something that I had had in my mind for a while that I wanted to try. And I had these green squares and I was like, I'm gonna do it, now's my chance. So I sewed them together, I made that sweater. Everything turned out exactly how I wanted it to. I was super delighted. There we go. When I finished it, I probably as I was making it, I was thinking, oh, okay. <laughs> this is awesome. You know what I also need? I need a cardigan. So to experiment with cardigan construction, I made this for my daughter. So this is the same thing that I'm wearing. This is a Jethro cardigan and it features way more granny squares than the Fleetwood pullover. The Fleetwood pullover just has nine granny squares and a panel on the front. This little cardigan, I believe has 36 granny squares. Now they're smaller, the granny squares, well, on the one that I'm wearing and on the Fleetwood pullover are five rounds of color and then the joining round. And so for my daughters, for this little one, my daughter is six, they're just three rounds of color and then the joining round. And so just to say, they're smaller. This was very quick, crochet is fast. So I just whipped off all of these and I used more of a specific palette for this one. I used actually the yarn that's included in our Fleetwood kit um, is a rainbow of 16 different colors, 25 gram skeins. And I will confess, okay, I'm like, I'm only using yarn from the wall. No, I also grabbed a Fleetwood kit, which before it was a Fleetwood kit, this is going to be so confusing. I'm so sorry, was a star blanket kit. Pause. I have a star blanket to show you. This is the Tin Can Knits Fly Away Blanket, knit in 16 colors of our yarn. And it's like, you know, my de facto logo. I love this 16 color Password Triangle Star so much that I have knit two blankets like this and I have a kit for it, a star blanket kit. So I have these awesome kits with 25 gram skeins of 16 different colors and they're our star blanket kit. And that's what I used the 16 different mini skeins 
for my daughter's cardigan because I wanted to see if I could. I wanted to see what the yardage would be like, how far it could take you, and it could take you quite far. There are um, a couple of the sizes of the pattern can be made with those minis, which is awesome. And obviously she wanted rainbows, she loved it. She was very enthusiastic about the crocheted squares on my Fleetwood pullover when I was making it. And so I made her a little cardigan and I just went totally nuts with it. Super colorful. And then when I did the picked up ribbing for the hem and for the button band, I then added a little stripe of color just at the bind off. I've included those notes in the pattern just to add more flair. Picked up stitches for the sleeves more stripes, more flair, like she is, you know, she's six, more is more, right? never enough rainbows. And I think it is so cute. And yeah, I just love it. It turned out so great. And so with the Jethro cardigan, now we're getting into whole new territory because as I said, Fleetwood is basically a knit sweater with just a crochet panel inset onto the front. Jethro is all crochet with the exception of the sleeves and so what the challenge for me in this one was in sizing and in fit i really wanted full squares for every size i didn't want to do half squares on the side i didn't want yeah i wanted to also maintain the front of the jethro cardigan does not meet when it's not buttoned up okay as you can see there is the equivalent of one square worth of crochet on the back and more than there is on the fronts. So to make that very plain, Willow's cardigan, and mine is actually the exact same format as hers, but like I said, mine have five round granny squares plus the joining round. Hers has three round granny squares plus the joining round. And she has eight on the, each front, so two by four, and then 20 on each back, five wide, four tall. And so that center one on the back is open on the front. So that's what creates a comfortable fit around the back of the neck. It leaves some room for the button bands down the front. And when what that means is when you do button up your sweater, you're losing about two inches of circumference. It's kind of designed, you know, I intend it to be worn open more, but it's totally able, I hope I'm still in frame when I stand up, I'm standing up in a very awkward way. You can absolutely button it up like I am. It just means that um, from the bottom, it's pulling in a little bit. But having said that, it's not a, for, I don't think it's a problem whatsoever in terms of the, like I still think it's totally buttonable. It's closable because I've designed it to have a ton of positive ease since everything is square there's no shaping on the shoulders normally if I were designing a knit pattern I shape the shoulders with short rows you can see the arm starts here and the neck here and there's a diagonal line of short rows so that it kind of follows the flow of the the shape of the shoulder in this pattern in Jethro with the crocheted squares it's just squares this is like as easy as it gets the back is completely rectangular straight out from the sides now the collar is raised in the back simply by the fact that it's a straight line and then you've picked up stitches along the top of the neck for the collar and so it gets raised um yeah straight up the side then you pick up stitches and you knit the sleeve now the thing about sizing for this i think because of the lack of tailoring the lack of shaping within the the crocheted panels that this really benefits from having quite a bit of positive ease because of the weight of the garment because like i said crochet is much heavier it does um it it drapes over your shoulders it pulls down it hangs flat I, I don't miss any of the shaping, which is something that I was worried about, that it would be kind of bulky or, and, and it, it is not, it isn't. It fits very comfortably. And I don't think sloppily, which is something that I was worried about with lack of shaping, but I think that the weight of the crochet just makes it all hang really nice. And um, the positive ease, I guess you can see, I have at least, you know, my body is here, I have more than one, squares worth of ease on each side. Um, I think it just adds a lot of movement and 
uh, drape and I just, I think it fits best and looks best with a generous amount of positive ease, which I've included notes on in the pattern. So then to size it, what that meant is the thing about the granny squares is that, you know, each round, it, it's a square, you're working with squares. So anytime you add a round to the gra granny square in terms of sizing, you're adding width and then you're also adding length. And so at a certain point that becomes too much. <laughs> like you don't want it, to, it becomes too much length is what I'm saying. Cause for the first couple of sizes, the first three sizes, I was able to just add additional rounds of granny squares and they're the same construction, eight squares on the front, 20 squares, eight squares per front, 20 squares on the back. And that sizing worked out really nicely proportionately. But then we got to a point where you know, to get the width that I wanted for the next size, I'm like now making a coat, like it's super long because of the, the size of the square. So that then as the sizes expand, we end up with making smaller squares and more of them. And then there's really beautiful schematics within the pattern that my tech editor, Laura Chow made. And it just, I wanted to keep the proportion. Like I didn't want, for example, in the size above mine, in order for it to not be too long, I could have done large squares and then only have like, let's say like three of them sewn together or two of them sewn together for the vertical height. But then the, it just wouldn't look like the same sweater as this, right? Like if you only had two or three really large squares on the back rather than a collection of many little squares, it's a different sweater in my opinion. So we really worked hard on the proportions to keep the proportion of the square consistent throughout in order to achieve the sizing that we were looking for. Now, I do think that the difference between knitting and crochet too, for these patterns, I'm not pretending like I'm an expert crochet pattern designer. I hope that I put that out there clearly because there, there is a lot of ways if, if you weren't working with granny squares or even if you were to add different crocheted elements to, to do more finicky sizing, but the way that I was designing them and the look that I wanted and the simplicity that I was going for with just the squares, I didn't want to, um, I wasn't, I wasn't going for that. So when I'm working on a knitting pattern, I'm working one stitch at a time, right? Stitch for stitch. And so between sizes, you can really, you can go as little or as big as you want because you're, you're, you're dealing in stitches. You're not necessarily dealing in squares and each of these squares, five inches. And when you add two squares to the front, because you can't just add a square on one side, you've added 10 inches to the size, right? So this is where playing with the size of the squares came in as well. But it does mean, and again, I think it really works out because of the positive ease that I'm intending this sweater to have. Um, the jump between sizes is larger than I typically do on a knitting pattern. Uh, however, I do feel like there is a size for everybody, so I'm I'm comfortable with that, I'm happy with that. But that's something that I really struggled with. And then I did a bit of research and apparently that's quite can, that's quite um, normal for crochet patterns of this style with granny squares. So I'm happy with that. <laughs> so one of the differences between knitting and crochet as well, in terms of the granny square thing, is you're adding additional squares. Like I said, you're adding a whole square. You're not, you can't just write in the pattern you know, knit for 10 inches or desired finish length of garment. It's almost more like a quilt in that way. Like you've got pieces that fit together and like a puzzle that you're putting together. Very, very fun. So this um, sweater, in order to adjust the circumference, or excuse me, to adjust the circumference, you add squares um, as is written in the pattern or rounds. And in order to add length, you can either add additional ribbing or add additional squares. And that's instructions are included for that in the pattern as well. But I think that was one of the biggest sort of new things, differences or challenges for me was how to work within the granny square limit, um, but make enough sizes, make the sizes that I wanted, but then keep the look the same, you know, the proportion that I wanted. So a very, Hey, you know what? I was going to say a fun challenge. I have to tell you, I'm not somebody who like loves the engineering aspect of pattern writing. It's not my favorite part. So I'm not going to call it a fun challenge, but I will say a challenge and a challenge that I think we, I, I, I met. And I look at my cat here in my cat tree. Oh, hi. Hi. So does the cat knock yarn off the wall? Yes, she does. <laughs> 
She's my sweet little cat. You probably can't fully see her, but maybe you can see some of her fur. I have a very mischievous black cat, but he's not interested in the yarn. But my sweet little gray cat will knock yarn off. She doesn't do anything to it, but she does knock, knock it off. That's what you can see here is the cat tree that we built for our cats, which felt like a very important thing to include in this episode about Granny Squares. Um, so there you have it. That is everything that I wanted to talk about. Granny Square cardigan, Granny Square sweater, Granny Square everything. We love Granny Squares. <laughs> Having a ton of fun with it. All the extra Granny Squares that I that I showed you earlier in my bin. Um, I still have no plan for them. Every time I start making Granny Squares, I think I'm going to just make a blanket and then it turns into something else. So who knows what's going to happen. Um, I guess it goes without saying, but it's obvious that for my daughters, I really went rainbow, rainbow, rainbow with the addition of the edging and the addition of the stripes. And I will admit that a full granny square cardigan is a lot, like it's a look, right? But I hoped that for mine, um, to make it a bit less, listen, I'm not passing any judgment. If you want rainbow stripes on yours and you want more rainbow down the front, absolutely go for it. I'm not saying... I hesitate to say to make mine less crazy <laughs> because it's not crazy it's super fun but i decided to try and kind of see if i could tone it down make it more wearable for my own personal style by not putting stripes on the sleeves not doing the contrast thing and keeping a more limited color palette this color palette is what i call my signature color palette something that goes from sort of gold through greens and turquoises and grays there's some grays in there to neutralize it and and some whites um, but it's really gold, green, blue, gold, green, turquoise. Okay, there we go. It's very obvious what the color palette is because you can see it with your own two eyes. Um, and I absolutely love how it turned out. I absolutely love it. I'm super happy that I have, um, you know, that I like followed my passion for granny squares. I have to say that is what has been most rewarding about designing these patterns and playing with this is that... Um, I was just having fun. I was just making granny squares because it's a fun thing to do with no plan, no intention of designing patterns for it. And yet it led me down this, this cardigan pullover granny square knitting combo path that I'm just like, so delighted with. And I'm still not over it. I don't know what I'm going to do next. I have an idea for like a little tank that just has some things there. I, I don't know, I don't know. I haven't started it, I haven't brainstormed, I haven't done anything yet, but maybe there'll be more. Um, I'm thrilled that you guys seem to be enjoying it. I'm here. Any questions come up, you reach out, you let me know, and I'm gonna do my very best to help you through it. Thinking that we should do a make-along um, because I know a lot of people are gonna be doing this sort of thing for the first time. And so let's cheer each other on and support each other. So stick around for some news about that. I will likely announce it in my newsletter and Instagram. If that comes to fruition, I'm terrible at organizing those things, but I will do my very best. If you're interested, let me know. Thank you for watching. I know this has been a lot of rambling about granny squares. <laughs> this is my life right now. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time.